Fiber Distributed Data Interface Fiber Distributed Data Interface, or FDDI, is a high-speed network technology that runs at 100 megabits per second over fiber optic cabling, often used for network backbones, in a local area network, or metropolitan area network, to support greater distances than copper. FDDI uses dual ring architecture, with traffic on each ring flowing in opposite directions. This is called counter-rotating. The dual rings consist of a primary and a secondary ring. During normal operation, the primary ring is used for data transmission, and the secondary ring remains idle. The primary purpose of the dual rings is to provide superior reliability and robustness. FDDI Transmission Media FDDI uses optical fiber as the primary transmission medium, but it also can run over copper cabling. FDDI over copper is referred to as Copper Distributed Data Interface, or CDDI. Optical fiber has several advantages over copper media. In particular, security, reliability, and performance, all are enhanced with optical fiber media because fiber does not emit electrical signals. A physical medium that does emit electrical signals, copper, can be tapped and therefore would permit unauthorized access to the data that is transiting the medium. In addition, fiber is immune to electrical interference from radio frequency interference and electromagnetic interference. Fiber, historically has supported much higher bandwidth than copper, although recent technological advances have made copper capable of transmitting at 100 megabits per second. Finally, FDDI allows 2 kilometers between stations, using multi-mode fiber, and even longer distances using a single mode. FDDI defines two types of optical fiber, single mode and multi-mode. A mode, is a ray of light that enters the fiber, at a particular angle. Multi-mode fiber uses LED as the light generating device, while single mode fiber generally uses lasers. Multi-mode fiber, allows multiple modes of light to propagate through the fiber. Because these modes of light enter the fiber at different angles, they will arrive at the end of the fiber at different times. This characteristic is known as, modal dispersion. Modal dispersion, limits the bandwidth and distances that can be accomplished using multimode fibers. For this reason, multimode fiber is generally used for connectivity within a building, or a relatively geographically contained environment. Single mode fiber allows only one mode of light to propagate through the fiber. Because only a single mode of light is used, modal dispersion is not present with single mode fiber. Therefore, single mode fiber is capable of delivering considerably higher performance connectivity over much larger distances, which is why it generally is used for connectivity between buildings and within environments that are more geographically dispersed. FDDI Specifications FDDI specifies the physical and media access portions of the OC reference model. FDDI is not actually a single specification, but it is a collection of four separate specifications, each with a specific function. Combined, these specifications have the capability to provide high-speed connectivity, between upper layer protocols, such as TCP IP and IPX, and media, such as fiber optic cabling. FDDI's four specifications are the media access control, physical layer protocol, physical medium dependent, and station management specifications. The MAC specification defines how the medium is accessed, including frame format, token handling, addressing, algorithms for calculating cyclic redundancy check value, and error recovery mechanisms. The PHY specification defines data encoding-decoding procedures, clocking requirements, and framing, among other functions. The PMD specification defines the characteristics of the transmission medium, including fiber optic links, power levels, bit error rates, optical components, and connectors. The SMT specification defines FDDI station configuration, ring configuration, and ring control features, 
including station insertion and removal, initialization, fault isolation and recovery scheduling, and statistics collection. FDDI is similar to IEEE 800.23 Ethernet, and IEEE 800.25 token ring, in its relationship with the OSI model. Its primary purpose is to provide connectivity between upper OSI layers of common protocols, and the media used to connect network devices. FDDI Station Attachment Types FDDI defines four types of devices. Single Attachment Station Dual Attachment Station Single Attached Concentrator and Dual Attached Concentrator ISAS attaches to only one ring through a concentrator. One of the primary advantages of connecting devices with SAS attachments is that the devices will not have any effect on the FDDI ring if they are disconnected or powered off. Each FDDI DAS has two ports, designated A and B. These ports connect the DAS to the dual FDDI ring. Therefore, each port provides a connection for both the primary and the secondary rings. As you will see later on, devices using DAS connections will affect the rings if they are disconnected or powered off. An FDDI concentrator, also called a dual attachment concentrator, is the building block of an FDDI network. It attaches directly to both the primary and secondary rings and ensures that the failure or power down of any SAS does not bring down the ring. This is particularly useful when PCs, or similar devices, that are frequently powered on and off, connect to the ring. FDDI Fault Tolerance FDDI provides a number of fault-tolerant features. In particular, FDDI's dual ring environment, the implementation of the optical bypass switch, and dual homing support, make FDDI a resilient media technology. Dual Ring FDDI's primary fault-tolerant feature is the dual ring. If a station on the dual ring fails or is powered down, or if the cable is damaged, the dual ring is automatically wrapped into a single ring. Wrapped means it doubled back onto itself. When the ring is wrapped, the dual ring topology becomes a single ring topology. Data continues to be transmitted on the FDDI ring, without performance impact, during the wrap condition. When a single station fails, devices on either side of the failed, or powered down station, wrap, forming a single ring. Network operation continues, for the remaining stations on the ring. When a cable failure occurs, devices on either side of the cable fault, wrap. Network operation continues for all stations. It should be noted, that FDDI truly provides fault tolerance, against a single failure only. When two or more failures occur, the FDDI ring segments into two or more independent rings that are incapable of communicating with each other. Optical Bypass Switch An optical bypass switch provides continuous dual ring operation if a device on the dual ring fails. This is used both to prevent ring segmentation and to eliminate failed stations from the ring. The optical bypass switch performs this function using optical mirrors that pass light from the ring directly to the DAS device during normal operation. If a failure of the DAS device occurs, such as a power off, the optical bypass switch will pass the light through itself by using internal mirrors and thereby will maintain the ring's integrity. The benefit of this capability is that the ring will not enter a wrapped condition in case of a device failure. Dual homing. Critical devices, such as routers or mainframe hosts, can use a fault-tolerant technique called dual homing to provide additional redundancy and to help guarantee operation. In dual homing situations, the critical device is attached to two concentrators. One pair of concentrator links is declared the active link, the other pair is declared passive. The passive link stays in backup mode, until the primary link, or the concentrator to which it is attached, is determined to have failed. When this occurs, the passive link automatically activates. FDDI Frame Format The FDDI Frame Format 
is similar to the format of a token ring frame. This is one of the areas in which FDDI borrows heavily from earlier LAN technologies, such as token ring. FDDI frames can be as large as 4,500 bytes. FDDI frame fields. Preamble gives a unique sequence that prepares each station for an upcoming frame. Start delimiter indicates the beginning of a frame by employing a signaling pattern that differentiates it from the rest of the frame. Frame control indicates the size of the address fields and whether the frame contains asynchronous or synchronous data, among other control information. Destination address contains a unicast, multicast, or broadcast address. As with Ethernet and token ring addresses, FDDI destination addresses are 6 bytes long. Source address identifies the single station that sent the frame. As with Ethernet and token ring addresses, FDDI source addresses are 6 bytes long. Data contains either information destined for an upper layer protocol or control information. Frame check sequence is filed by the source station with a calculated cyclic redundancy check value, dependent on frame contents, as with token ring and Ethernet. The destination address recalculates the value, to determine whether the frame was damaged in transit. If so, the frame is discarded. And delimiter. Contains unique symbols, cannot be data symbols, that indicates the end of the frame. Frame status. Allows the source station, to determine whether an error occurred, identifies whether the frame was recognized, and copied by a receiving station. Copper Distributed Data Interface Copper Distributed Data Interface, or CDDI, is the implementation of FDDI protocols over twisted pair copper wire. Like FDDI, CDDI provides data rates of 100 megabits per second, and uses dual ring architecture to provide redundancy. CDDI supports distances of about 100 meters from desktop to concentrator. CDDI is defined by the ANSI X3T9.5 committee. The CDDI standard is officially named the Twisted Pair Physical Medium Dependent TPPMD standard. It is also referred to as the Twisted Pair Distributed Data Interface or TPDDI, consistent with the term Fiber Distributed Data Interface. CDDI is consistent with the physical and media access control layers, defined by the ANSI standard. The ANSI standard recognizes only two types of cables for CDDI, shielded twisted pair, and unshielded twisted pair. SDP cabling has a 150 ohm impedance, and adheres to EIA, TI of 568 specifications. UTP is data grade cabling, consisting of four unshielded pairs, using tight pair twists and specially developed insulating polymers in plastic jackets, adhering to EIA, TI of 568B specifications. If you want to learn more about networking concepts and definitions, don't forget to press the subscribe button. To be notified, when our channel releases another video, click also on the bell icon. And don't forget to visit our website, networkencyclopedia.com.